Welcome to this week's edition of The Magnet. This is a program that parades professionals from diverse fields. They lend a voice to the growth of our business and they also mentor us on television. It's a platform to reach your target audience. Today we have an Amazon, a Harvard product, a product of the premier university in the country. An astute boardroom guru that sits atop on several boards in Nigeria. We are reaching you from Lagos, the state of aquatic splendor, the center of excellence, who is a magnet for the week. She's an Amazon. Let's go chat and chill with our magnet. Come with us. Mrs. Mosumbele Olushoga, popularly known as Antimo, is the lead consultant, chief executive officer of the KRC Knowledge and Resource Center Limited a world-class services provider with specialty focus on credit training. Mo owes a BSc in economics from the University of Ibadan, graduated with a second-class upper degree, and is a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountant of Nigeria and honorary member of the Chartered Institute of Bankers. She began her career as a training accountant with the then Master Scoopers and Librand Chartered Accountant in 1980. She qualified as a Chartered Accountant in 1983, winning the first place and the Society of Women Accountant of Nigeria Swan Awards in the qualifying professional examination. She subsequently moved to the then Continental Merchant Bank Limited towards the end of 1986 in a bid to change her career to banking. She joined Guarantee Trust Bank PLC as a pioneer staff in 1990 where she gained robust experience having added the major core banking groups including investments, corporate and commercial banking, transaction services, risk management and settlements, domestic and international operations groups. She retired as executive director Head of the bank's southwest division responsible for all marketing operations within region. Mo has a record of first, the first female executive director of Guaranteed Trust Bank, the first female director of Access Bank, the first female director of Premium Pension Limited, first African director of Global Alliance for Women in Banking, first female chairman of Access Bank, and first female pro-chancellor and chairman of Council of Olabisi Onobanjo University. During her tenure as chairman, Access Bank recorded unprecedented growth in key parameters, which has seen its emerge as Nigeria's number one in several key performance indices and Africa's largest bank by customer size. She is also the current co-chair of the Nigerian chapter, Women Corporate Directors, WCD. Mo has attended several local and international training groups during the course of her career. She is a product of some of the world's prestigious business schools, including IMD. Harvard, Columbia, Chicago Booth, and INSEED. She is the past chairman of the Equipment and Leasing Association of Nigeria, Trust Bank of Africa, and sits on the board of a number of companies. Mo is passionate about knowledge sharing, personal and professional grooming, and the quest to transform children into responsible, socially responsive, and culturally balanced young adults. This has led to the founding of City of Knowledge Academy as a vehicle to achieve this vision. You're welcome back to the magnets. I told you, hmm? I didn't say it, she earned it. It's a great pleasure to welcome to the magnets after a very, very long wait. <laughs> Mrs. Mosubelu Ulushoga. I don't even know how to introduce her. She's former chairman of Access Bank, principal consultant, KROC, and so many, many more. We talk of founder, CKA. You're welcome to the magnet, ma. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having us eventually. And I know you're good at I apologize. I apologize. <laughs> but you know how it is. I know, definitely. Thank you for your patience. Oh, thank you, ma. So now, this is the magnet. The magnet is lending a voice to business growth and mentoring. And that's what we are really set to do today. Let's start from your, your banking career, ma'am. You started and rose to the position of executive director, investment banking. You know, of all just do banking. What exactly is investment banking? Tutor us so that we can be on the same page. Well, possibly with you. I became ED when I was head of investment banking. But when I retired, I was actually the divisional head in the southwest region of okay. Guarantee Trust Bank. But um, investment banking um, has to do with mostly money management. So you have the treasury department, you have currency trading, currency trading, both local currency and foreign currency, as well as how you match your assets. Those are the loans. 
and the deposits. So the, the department is the one that ensures that the bank has enough deposits to be able to lend and also trade in the currencies, as I said, local and foreign currencies. Okay, so if I have some money I don't really have a ready need for, can I invest it? Is that part of investment banking? Well, what you will do is you place your money in the bank, right? So you'll probably be maybe a commercial bank customer. So the commercial bank will now give it to investment banking to invest in whatever products, right? So it could be in treasury bills. It could be also lending to people who want to borrow money. And that they will make use of your money so that you get returns for the deposits that you have made. Okay, interesting. You know, those days, I remember growing up, it was so prestigious to say, I'm a banker. You know, that white shirt, blue shirt. Well, it was still <laughs> prestigious. I, I think it's still oh, prestigious. We the reforms in the banking sector. Yes. You know, Do you think it's still really prestigious? Of course it's prestigious. Without banks in any society, no bank, no society can function. Right, they are the engine of growth in any society. So whether it is the investment part, whether it is lending for in, uh, for growth of the economy, so bankers will continue to be relevant, even without the formalization of banking. We have always had banking. We've always had trading, right? So I think banking is still very prestigious, and it depends on what you bring to the table and how you carry yourself and how you do your business. Your career path, so to say. Okay, now. Mm. You know, we can't talk about this without talking about the effects, the pandemic, recession, and everything has had on all sectors. Banking is not excluded. Do you think, you know, about 10, 15 years ago, we saw this merger and acquisition and things like that. Do you think this pandemic or recession will affect this sector in no distant time? You know, I, I think that... Um in any situation that you have challenges, there will always be opportunities, sure, sure. right? So you just have to open your eyes to the opportunities that are available in the economy, right? Yes, you said there's pandemic, but believe it or not, banks are still making a lot of money, right? So it's just being creative, being innovative and saying, okay, if we can't go this way, can we go that way? We've discovered in all businesses that you don't have to go to the office uh, nine, nine to five anymore, mm -hmm. right? So you can actually do your business. You can actually be more productive being away from the office. So yes, the pandemic uh, um, has its challenges, but it also opened a variety Lots of opportunities, of opportunities okay. for the people that are clear-eyed mm. to be able to- Innovative um, and creative. Precisely. Right, you, you took it off me, you know, working from home. Some people see it as maybe downsizing, right-sizing, and uh, job loss, job insecurity. It permeates in all sectors now. Ooh. I actually think working from home, people are a lot more productive, and you actually work longer hours at home because you don't feel the need to close at five or at six. So you're working till early morning, uh, early hours of the morning and things like that. So you actually spend more time. And for me, for my business, for example, we're trainers. It's actually more difficult to make sure that our participants are fully engaged, right? While we're training. So you have to continuously call, I mean, are you there? Um, somebody, can you answer the questions and things like that? And when we close, there's always a chat group that People are asking questions that I did, please, this thing that you said, you know, so working from home is very, very stressful. And uh, I don't believe that when you're working from home, you're taking things easy and things like that. No, you can actually be a lot more productive um, working from home That's because... Right. You cut off the traffic. traffic. You cut off um, <laughs> uh, the hassle of um, getting ready mm, and traveling. And anxiety. So, so the, the, the travel time mm. can actually be spent, spent more productively. Okay, thank you so much. But you know, as an astute banker, having been a major player in, in the industry... You flatter me. Oh, really? <laughs> but I'm saying the reality is not me. You end it. How would you lend a voice to this trending policy of the CBN? on the bureau de change? For me, I've always said that it's only in Nigeria that the bureau de change gets allocated money from, this, from the central bank. In most economies, 
a bureau de change is to buy and sell money from the general populace. So you are a traveler, for example, you go to a bureau de change, I want to sell this money to be able to buy that. So they don't get money. For example, you go to the UK, the Bank of England doesn't get, give any bureau de change money to be able to trade in. So you do your activity based on buying and selling of whatever is around. It's only, unfortunately, in the Nigerian economy, the flow is mostly in one direction, right? But when you have inflows, people working abroad, um, they're sending money to their parents, to whatever, projects to, and for projects like and things that. like that, yes. right? So the monies will go to the Bureau de Change, and those are the kind of money that the Bureau de Change should be selling, mm. right? So I, I don't see anything um, particularly um, wrong. But is that a plus or minus to the commercial banks? I don't think it's neither there nor, nor the hair nor there for commercial bank, unless, of course, the CBN now says, okay, I'm going to allocate more money for you to be able to give the people that want to buy BTA or PTA. In that instance, the, obviously, they will end commission, right? They will end their 1% commission on the sale. So maybe in that instance, it might be um, good for them. But of course, it will also come with the attendant um, stress of at, um, attending to customers and things like that. Okay, my very well said. You know, at the opening, we said you have a lot of, uh, you are somebody of many parts. It's not, we, I'm not the one saying it. It's what I do you for. Now, let's conclude or attempt to conclude your banking career. You know, you rose to the pinnacle, you retired, and then you were fished out to come and sit at top of Access Bank. Just share with us that moment you got that letter. Chairman, Access Bank. How did you feel? Fulfilling, right? You, um, you know, I've always said I'm a beneficiary of God's mercy, right? Um, I wasn't fished out to be chairman of um, Access Bank. When I left as executive director in Guarantee Trust Bank, a year later, I became a board member, a non-executive director of Access, and I had been in Access for seven years wow. before I became chairman, right? So our chairman retired, and um, honestly, when Herbert approached me, the first thing I said, I was like, ah, what do I know about you? Why, 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 why me? But God has a way of um, just pushing you, and you know, he makes sure that once your uh, um, willing to put in your best, right, and that you have the support of other people. And with prayers, everything will work out fine. But honestly, the, my first thought was that, uh, who am I to be chairman? But with hindsight, who am I not? I wonder. You know, who are who you I, not? Honestly, who am I not? <laughs> because I've been I'm being the first female. You know, alhamdulillah, right? I was actually the first female director of any sort in Access Bank, so whether the executive or non-executive. So our first few meetings, I was the only um, um, woman and was competent was, uh, 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 competent to fulfill um, that role. Yes, we are still interacting here, interesting conversation, you will say. I hope you are jotting down. Been, voice being lent to your business, the growth of your business. We have a Harvard product, a product of the Premier University flying colors. <laughs> Let's go for a short break. We'll continue with the conversation shortly. Ames Media Company Limited offers media services for developmental journalism, public relations, marketing, event coordination, Pan-Nigeria, and training. Top-notch media content comprising documentaries, talk shows, magazine and children's shows, each and all promoting family values for sustainable development. Our partners, collaborators and patrons span individuals, groups, corporate bodies, government, NGOs, UN bodies and more. Be reassured that our studio facility will meet your yearnings of digital solutions to your broadcast content. We are peopled by board members with unblemished track records and major players in the corporate world. Hello, it's Child Crest. Her panache, passion and professionalism 
make her the lead driver of our goal focused team. Entrust your brands to Ames Media Company Limited to add value to your corporate existence while meeting your target audience. www.amesmedia.com.ng Info at amesmedia.com.ng Like us on our Facebook page, Ames Media Company Limited. Ames Media. Turning your dreams into reality. Welcome back. We're still chatting with, we call her Auntie Mo. She'll be telling us how she got that name. Somebody whispered to me, do you know how she got that name? I'm sure on the lighter side, she'll tell you. We're still with Mrs. Mosumbelo Ulushoga. Now, we're, let's look at her academic aspect. She also became the chairman of Olabisi Onobanjo Governing Council, which is stepped down recently. Do you want to share that experience with us? Because what we hear is that becoming a governing council chair in relation to you know, the administration, sometimes have issues. We know what happened recently in a very prominent university. You had a seamless tenure, I would say. Share that experience with us, man. As a woman, too. The very first woman, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Again, God's mercy preceded me. I, I was at um, a board meeting at Access Bank. I was chairing Access Bank board meeting. And I got a call. I, I looked at my phone. It was on silent, but I, and I saw it was the SSG of Ogun State, um, Taiwa Adiolua. And the bank had been trying to get an appointment to see the governor with respect to some um, business. And I said to um, Herbert, the um, group managing director, that he should please excuse me because I had been um, trying to get them the appointment, that this might be the appointment, that he should let me take the call. And obviously, I went out to um, receive the call. And um, the SSG just said, uh, Mrs. Olushoga, please hold on for my principal. And Taiwo hardly calls me Mrs. Olushoga, I'm Auntie Mo. <laughs> Right. Formal. Yes, it was very formal. And the um, governor just said, oh, we just finished a meeting and you've been appointed the pro-chancellor and chairman of Olabisi Onobanjo University and um, congratulations. And he just dropped the phone. Wow. And um, the first person that I talk to when anything happens to me is my brother. So without even going into the, um, into back into the board meeting, so I called um, LB and said, this was what had just happened. And he said, don't worry, we'll talk about it later. So I just went into the, um, in, back to my meeting and concluded my meeting. And I said to Herbert, I'll talk to you about it later. I talked to my brother. Well, he said it was an honor that I should go and have a meeting to, um, I went to see the governor, and the governor was very, very clear. And he said that I was appointed solely because I was a professional, and he wanted a professional to run the university. And that fortunately, the board, the um, uh, council before me had resolved a lot of the issues. So I was very, very fortunate because the council that was headed by Dr. Shegun Oshin had done a yeoman's job to put things in place before I came on board, right? So when I came on board, the way I handle my business is, right, I come with the professional perspective, but I also come with humility, right? Uh, right, uh, uh, um, because I'm willing to learn. And I was very, very fortunate in that the council members were all professional and we all wanted to see the elevation of the status of Olabisi Onobanjo University. I didn't have anything to gain. I can say I didn't collect one Kobo sitting allowance. So all my sitting allowances, I just said, just keep it. So I'm going to use it for an endowment. Mm -hmm. So I was just there as a professional and I was lucky that I had a council of professionals. The vice chancellor, um, Professor Gani Olatunji, is a thorough professional because one of my, my 
one of my first assignments was to choose a substantive VC. He was acting VC when I came on board. And we interviewed him along with other interested parties because we had to put um, an advert in the newspaper. The university is run strictly by guidelines. And I didn't want anything to be outside the university guidelines. So they have their charter. And if you do anything, it's a way ASU can come in and say, uh, no, you didn't do this, or Sanon can come in. So I was very, very particular in making sure that we did everything according to the university constitution. So we had an interview for the um, prospective vice chancellors. And we actually also got Professor Ola Inka in, who was the vice chancellor of university of Ibadan as an independent consultant, right? So he rated, but we didn't consider his rating. But everybody, and it was a unanimous decision to appoint um, Professor um, Gio Olatunde. And when a tenor uh, was due, you know, normally people will continue. And I said, no, the tenor was marked, we were swearing on, on May 26th. So I sought an app uh, appointment with the current SSG that, look, a tenor is over. I would like to give a report to the current uh, governor to say, okay, this is what we have done, and four years is over, and let's um, leave. So then the governor can appoint a new um, pro-chancellor. Congratulations, ma'am. Thank well, you, you very much. You just started chairing or uh, being a guru in the boardroom. You were also chair of the equipment leasing association of, uh, is that the correct name? Yes, Elan. Yes. Equipment leasing association Elan, of yes. Nigeria. You know, um, uh, you small, small now. It, 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 it's, it's, it's God's mercy. Um, banks are members of Elan. Okay. Then we also have individual members. I'm also an individual member. And um, banks choose representatives to, um, to attend Elan meetings. So I, I was representing um, Guarantee Trust Bank. And yes, at that time. And we had. Um, uh, a vice chairman, uh, Mr. Labisi, who used to be a director in the then Afri Bank, right? Who was the um, who was the chairman, and they, um, they were they, they said um, they were they, they wanted nominations for directors, and typical me, I would just sit down. So somebody said, hey, "That woman, you know that woman from Guarantee Trust Bank," <laughs> and um, they said we should come and speak. I said, well, I've never lobbied for any position in my life, and I'm not about lobbying for any position now. That if you believe that I can add value, so be it. If not, I'm not going to beg anybody for, you know. So we, uh, so I sat down that I'm, I'm not going to, but if I am part, I, I will do my very best. So I, and so I became a director of um, um, the board of trustees, and. Um, Later, they wanted a, a, a vice chairman, so they pointed to me again. I said, okay, well, alhamdulillah. Oh, so when, uh, touch. Well, when it's, it's just grace, it's just God's grace. So when um, um, Mr. Olabisi um, left, I became um, the chairman. Again, you know, God has so favored me because he puts around me competent people who have the same vision. So I'm usually not in the, um, in the company of people of um, different, very, very different minds. We can come from diverse backgrounds, but once we are at a table, we have the same vision. So in that aspect, I'm very, very lucky. And there were people that I could relate very well with. So you had um, Dr. Kunli Wright, you had uh, uh, Agbaoye, um, uh, Sami Ile, Sami, you know, young people, but very, very brilliant, brilliant. intelligent Technocrats, people. Yes. Achievers, professionals. Yes. Precisely. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's just take a detour now. Earlier on, we talked about your academic part, a professional heading an academic institution. Could that be what uh, motivated you to leave the banking sector? Accountancy to even set up an audit firm, you know, choose to be an entrepreneur, set up a gigantic, world class, global CKA. Being a thorough homebred, you went to Jebu all day. What inspired you, man? You, you know, 
Um, one thing I believe is um, I've been blessed, right? And I wanted to start at the grassroots because um, you know, by the, I, I train bankers. Bankers, to, at, at, by the time you've left university, you're a banker, you are formed already. So I want to be, I wanted to be part of the formation of a total child. So I said, okay, how uh, would I be able to do that? Um, a secondary school was, um, was very, very clear in my mind because those are the formative stages of a child. As much, well, the kind of land, because we're situated on a 10 hectare piece of land. Uh, yes, it's, it's, it's a huge expanse of land. I will not be able to get that expanse of land in Lagos or I would move close to Ekpe. When I'm in Ekpe, I'm in Ijebode. So I might as well be in Ijebode and it will be too expensive. But I wanted to go to the community that I am from. You know, um, in Ogun State, you had the likes of what De Waterman in Abekuta Axis, De Waterman as well as Noble House. But in Ijebode, you had good secondary schools, but they were old. You know, you had the Adiola or the Tola, Ijebode Grammar School uh, and Sarudin, you know. But I wanted also an international school. So for me, Ijebode was it. So yes, Molosile. I told you that we are taking a trip to Harvard, or is it a... University of Ibado and so many other places that the knowledge that has been poured on us today. Thank you so much again for having us. The Magnet is still the program. We're still chilling with Auntie Mo. Let's go for this short break. As in, let's halt our conversation now. We'll bring in the concluding part of this interactive discussion same time next week. The Magnet, lending a voice to business growth and mentoring on television. Mm -hmm.